Uh, Joe, you heard Thanks. you heard Mike giving his analysis, of course, on where we stand right now. Uh, you know, as we enter the last few months of the year, uh, and particularly after this record August, what are your thoughts about the broader market? Well, it's certainly been a, a, a monstrous August. I mean, the uh, markets were up seven, eight uh, plus percent, and you had uh, a sense that viruses were peaking. You had better than expected second quarter earnings, although expectations were abysmally low, but they did exceed that meaningfully. Some of the echo data has been uh, improving. And importantly, last week, you saw from the Fed uh, continuation and really an expansion of the dovish policies that uh, have been helping the markets over the course of the last couple of months. So, you know, that's helped uh, develop you know, uh, some really bullishness. I think Mike summarized it well. Certain segments of the market, I think you see some absolute frothiness. And uh, when I look across our portfolio managers, uh, those in the value camp are getting a bit more aggressive because they're seeing the economic data improve a bit. And uh, on the on the growthy side, though, we've seen some pull back a bit because of that uh, aggressive valuation on that. Uh, uh, you know, on that edge of the market, if you will. I think over the next couple of months, my expectation is that you're going to see uh, a trading range within the market because you've got uh, um, uh, important policy issues to be resolved, of course, in November. And because the markets move so far uh, so quickly, uh, I think it's uh, a time to sort of see it, you know, really uh, tread water for a bit until you get greater clarity beyond that. Yeah, but Joe, don't you if uh, don't you abandon those so-called frothy stocks at your own peril? I mean, they're the growth names. They're the names that have driven us higher. And as much as we like to hear about value really coming back in a significant way, I don't know if you're a PM at Newburger, aren't you sort of uh, going to be underperforming the S&P if you don't own some of those names? It's a, it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge, David, because you, you want to maintain that valuation discipline. But I think what the market over the last four or five, six months has shown is valuation is really not a catalyst one way or the other, right? If a business model is working, that stock is going to continue to work regardless, almost regardless of what that valuation is on the more aggressive end. At the same time, if a business model is not particularly working, think deep value stocks, uh, the catalyst, which may be an incredibly cheap historical multiple doesn't catalyze investing in that end of the market. So it's certainly a momentum driven market, but that's part of the job of our of our PMs, which is to maintain that level of discipline and make those judgments on individual stocks that get ahead of themselves. I, I still think that, you know, leaning into quality, um, durable growth is the right place to be right now until you see a more sustained pickup in, in the economy. Mike, uh, as you look at some of the news today surrounding uh, the changes in, in the Dow and the stock splits, things that, you know, typically we might we brush off, at least on the stock split side of things, uh, how would you characterize those in terms of, uh, you know, what they say about investors' mindset right now, uh, particularly as it relates to just momentum and, and news-driven trading? Yeah, I mean, Leslie, I, I think what, the way I would think about it is, that these companies, whether they're explicit about it or not, are catering to a very active new constituency in the market. There is a new public excitement about stocks, certain stocks, in this market in the last few months, and it's animating things in a way that wasn't really the case for much of the prior decade, frankly. And uh, that's not, not necessarily in itself to say that things got overheated or there's dumb money in the market. And it, it's just, you know, short term crowd psychology is what moves most stocks, you know, over a, a relatively short time period. Um, and so, yes, we can talk about how stocks don't really mean anything and it's just psychological and it's just this kind of vague signaling effect from companies. But that's kind of what's changing valuations at the margin all the time in the short term. So I'm, I'm loath to say that it's somehow this kind of capstone of this bull move is that we got these two prominent stock splits and we have all these new retail traders in there and therefore things have to end because I don't necessarily think uh, it runs that way. I do think this could just be a different type of market for a while where that activity happens in parallel to everything else, which is the algorithms trading with each other, the quant models kind of all agreeing basically on how things ought to be valued, you know, based on cash flows and interest rates and macro factors. So I just think you can have multiple threads running through a market at once.